So the first thing that we'll notice is it brings us to this screen, which shows a plane, and there's a red line and a blue line that are crossing through the origin. On the left side, we can see under origin, we have a point. I'll click on it. And that's the origin point. And you can see on the bottom right here, it actually gives us coordinates of that origin point. All three are at zero because that point is at the origin. We also see that we have a line or axis coming through the x direction. We have another one coming through the y direction and a third at the z. We also have three planes, the xy, xz, and yz. And these three planes are related to our three axes. So I'm going to show visibility on these three planes. And if I click on the top right here, you see that there's this cube. If you click on different points of this cube, you'll see that the view changes accordingly. So I can click on the corner here and you can see that I'm rotating around and I'm seeing the 3D nature of all of these planes. So at this point, we can choose a plane. I'm going to choose this XZ plane and I'm going to come up here to this plus sign and we're going to create a sketch. Now a sketch is the basis that all 3D parts and assemblies are built on. Using sketches, you can create 3D shapes. So I'm going to click on create a sketch. Now from here, you're going to see that all of a sudden this top bar has changed. We now have options for the line, the rectangle, the circle, the spline, and etc. We can use these lines, these one dimensional lines, to create two dimensional shapes. So let's create a two dimensional shape. I'm going to click on this two point rectangle. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the origin. Once I click down, you're going to see that the software brings out a rectangle. Now I'm going to just click again to place it. And at this point, you can see that I just have a rectangle and these little indicators pop up. These are called constraints. But what we want to do first, before we even look at that, is we want to set a dimension for the whole rectangle. We want to have two different dimensions, one for this line and another one for this line. These two lines are going to describe the size. So let me come over to where it says sketch dimension, or you can click on D on your keyboard. Click on sketch dimension. And we're going to click down again. And I'm going to set this to be six millimeters and hit enter. I'm also going to click on this line, drag out, click down again, and make it three millimeters. We've created our rectangle. I can choose to click here on this bottom edge on the top right. I could actually look at this rectangle in a 3D perspective, or I can click back on top to look at it normal to this rectangle. Because of the fact that we're working on the top plane, when you click on top, you're looking normal to the top plane. If I click here on this bottom arrow, you're going to see that we're looking at it directly from the side. And so you don't see anything because you're looking right at the side of it. So we're going to go back. And at this point, I can come here to the solid, the solid tab. And I can click on this icon. It's called extrude. So we're going to click on it. And you're going to see that Autodesk Fusion was smart enough to determine that we want this shape to be used in our extrusion, this 2D shape. Each one of these lines makes up this 2D shape. There are four in total. And 
we're going to use the 2D shape to create a 3D shape now. So on this side, you're going to see that this window pops up that says extrude. It has a couple different options we can use. It has the profile plane. It has direction, it has extent, and all these sorts of things. For right now, we're going to look at this arrow and click down on it. Now drag it out. And when you drag it out, you're going to see that the distance here on the right side, this value changes. So I can come here and I can type in seven millimeters. Now, if you move this arrow back and forth, you're gonna see that you're limited to one millim to half millimeter increments. But if you come over here to distance and you type in a value that's very exact, 7.158 you can set very exact increments inside of this window which you cannot do here just by dragging it back and forth so we're gonna hit OK here and once we do that you're going to see that our shape has been engendered and so what we've done is we've taken a 2d sketch and turned it into a 3d shape as you can see if I look at this from the top, you can see the profile that we used to make it. Now, if we look at it from the front, you can see this face. And I'm going to click on this top corner in order to look at this from a three quarter view, a nice uh, isometric. And at this point, we're going to add a couple more of what's called features to this part. And so just like we did before, we want to start always with a sketch. So I'm going to click on create sketch again. And this time, instead of clicking on the X, Y, the X, Z, or the Y, Z plane to start a sketch, I'm actually just going to select one of the faces of the block. So I'm going to select this top face. And you're going to see that I could actually start a sketch right on the top face of this. So I can come over and click on this circle button, which comes up automatically. And I can just click down, drag out, and I'm going to go back to the solid tab like we did before, and I'm going to click on extrude again. And because of the fact that we're looking at it from the top, it's very hard to see what's going on with our extrusion because we would never be able to tell how high this extrusion is. I'm going to come over to the top right and click on this corner. And if I select this circle that I created, I can drag this out where I want it to be. I want it to be five millimeters. Now I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that this has been created. So. From here, what we want to do is create another extrusion before we continue. I'm going to click on Create Sketch, and I'm going to click on this face of our already made part. And I'm going to click on the Rectangle tool, click down, drag out, and come up here, look at it from 3 quarters. And let's go back to solid. And from here, you're going to see that we're going to move over to extrude again. I'm going to click on this face. And when I drag out, you can see that I can create another extrusion. Now this time, we're going to look at this operation. And that's the second part of the window here and if I click on it there are a bunch of different options join is what we're doing now we would be adding material we're extruding and adding another piece of material to our part now instead I can choose to do cut so I'm gonna click on this cut right here right under join and if I drag this the other way you can see that I'm cutting through the material you see that it comes up in red. If you create an extrusion, 
So if I come and, and hit join, you see that it comes up in the material color. But if I come back and hit cut and drag it back through the part, you see that it's red. So you're cutting, you're getting rid of material. So we're gonna hit okay. And if I look at this from the front, you can see that that material is completely gone. Very useful when you wanna cut into a material. So those are the very basics of how to use a software. And we're going to go over one more tool here before we finish. It's almost as simple as what we've gone over, but adds a level of complexity and a level of freedom that you don't necessarily get just within the bounds of extrusions. So what I wanna do here is I wanna look at I want to click on this face and instead of using this top right block to position the part to look, I can actually come down here and click on this little button. You see that? It says look at. So if I click on this little button down here, you see that the face I selected, I'm looking directly at it right now. I'm looking normal to that face. So at this point, I can start a sketch on this face and I'm going to create a line this time. Create a line, drag it up, and let's go to the right and let's go down, click, and then out, click, down, back in again, down and click again and click back on the original line. So your shape should look something like this. And this is really just an example to show you how this tool works. So from here, we have one line that's longer than this closed shape right here. So I'm gonna come back to solid and I'm gonna click on Revolve. And you're gonna see that we have this window pop up. And what we can do is click for our profile. So the first thing that it wants me to select, which is in blue here, and you can see the little mouse here, what that means is that it wants you to select something. So what I'm gonna select is this Close Profile under Profile. So click on the profile. And now the I can click here for this second selection. I'm going to click on it. And what this is asking for is an axis. So I'm going to click on this line. And what you see is all of a sudden this sort of other shape is mirrored to the other side. Now I'm going to come here to operation and I'm going to click on join instead of cut. Just like we learned with regular extrusions, what you want to do is either a join or a cut. There's also intersect and some other things here, but for right now, we're going to focus on these two. So I'm going to click on join. And if I go to the top right and click on my block, you can see that I've created a solid using this tool, using this revolve. So I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that this revolve has created the profile shape. So basically, if I go under sketches in the sketch tab, I can come down to sketch four, which is the sketch that we created this on. I can right click on it. And when I right click on the tab, I can hit edit sketch. And now I'm back to editing that original sketch that we were working with. So I can change the size of it. I can even click on a line and delete and click on another line and delete it. I can come back to line and I can even create an entirely different sort of shape here. And as long as there's a closed profile, this will work. 
closed profile meaning that there's no opening inside of this shape it's completely closed there's no gap now if I clicked on one of these lines and I deleted it all of a sudden it's open that's not gonna work that's gonna fail so I'm gonna go back to line and I'm gonna reconnect these two points and you're gonna see that it's now closed it even comes up in a color to show you so that being said come up here to where it says finish sketch and click on it and you're going to see that my sketch has been updated and my feature has been updated as well I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and this just about covers the very basics